First of all, I'm indeed honored and considered a privilege to be here tonight to honor you, Joanna, my friend, and Stan, my friend. Uh, happy birthday, lest I forget to say that at the end. Uh, I cannot believe that you are 80 years old. You just are remarkable. I hope when I get to be 80, I can move like you do and have such an active mind like you do. Um, Joanna and, and Stan, to me, have always represented diversity and bringing a variety of people together uh, who have obvious different characteristics. And they stand for diversity. So I'm going to ask people to take just 10 seconds, please, and look around this room and look at the people here. I can't see, but I can feel the love in this room and the love that Joanna brings people together. We all came here for one purpose, to honor Joanna. We all know her in different ways, as was said earlier. Um, but we're honoring her. We came with that in common. But as you look around the room and the people that you've talked to tonight, we've learned other things that we have in common with, she, with each other. And to me, that's what Stan and Joanna symbolize, both in their education and in their personal relationship. I met Joanna back in the 1983 when I was on faculty in Michigan State. Oh, I forgot. One advantage of being blind is I can't see Miriam pointing at her watch, OK? So. Over here, JJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. Hear me. Right, right. <laughs> I came to the university, uh, I met Stan in, in 1983 when he was teaching classes at Michigan State, I believe it was called Management, sorry, Managing Diversity in the World of Work. And he would have various panels, and I was on the panel with people with disabilities in that class. And it was an exciting class, and after each class, he would do this every term, after each class he would invite the group back to their house uh, for dinner or just good times. And he always had to make transportation arrangements because most of it did not drive. And I met Joanna at that time, and I met Ben, and I think I met Josh and Miriam at that, that time. Uh, it was later, when I, after I'd been in Chicago and then came back here to Michigan, um, that Joanna kind of inherited me from Stan. <laughs> and uh, we started doing those same kind of panels at L Lansing Community College. Uh, the panels again, were for the field of management and business, but uh, she'd have maybe two to five of us with a variety of disabilities, and we'd come and, and spend five minutes telling about our disability. And then the primary purpose of that class was for the students to ask us questions and learn and grow about that part of diversity. Oftentimes, I'd wind up early to the class, and I discovered that Joanna was showing the class, uh, the students a wonderful video about people with disabilities and a video of people with disabilities. And so that was kind of a prelude for our panel coming in. And I must commit, commend you, Joanna, because I always brought my own paraphernalia to show, such as talking clocks for the blind and uh, Braille magazines, those kind of things. So for me, it was an opportunity to educate uh, the students about my disability. One of the things I've never told you, Joanna, is that you brought that panel to teach your students. But I always felt, and I know, that I learned more about myself as a blind person through those students' excellent questions. Sometimes it, we would get into very emotional and very private is, issues. And our basic philosophy is there no question that is not allowed. Any question is welcome because we're there to learn. And so I love that because I feel I got more than I gave many times. And I appreciate that opportunity. Um, let me close, Miriam. <clears throat> with a, I, I'm going to tell you about a couple. And although there's some similar, similarity between Stan and Joanna, the man in the story is 82 and the wife is 80, please don't think it's Stan and Joanna, OK? Um, Let's call him Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson <laughs> went to the doctor uh, for a physical, and at the end of the physical part, the doctor called him in the office and said, Mr. Johnson, all your uh, records are fine, all your readings, your x-rays and everything is fine, but how do you sleep at night? And Mr. Johnson said, well, I, I sleep just fine, doctor. He said, I might uh, get up once or twice during the night to go to the bathroom, and God turns the light on for me. And the doctor was confused by that, but he let us go and 
when Mr. Johnson left the office, the doctor called the, the wife on the telephone. She said, he said, Mrs. Johnson, uh, I'm confused. Your husband tells me that he gets up once, a night, once or twice a night to go to the bathroom, and God turns the light on for him. And the wife said, I gotta talk to him. He's peeing in the refrigerator again. <laughs> Like that wife, Joanna, you are always met the challenge, and you always have an answer. And to quote a, a person I admire, um, what the heck is oh, To quote a person that I admire, Bob Hope, I want to thank you for the memories, and thank you for bringing all of us together. <laughs> Thanks, JJ. Thank